playing WoW and you want to make some gold while picking flowers and touching grass? I can help you there. <laughs> Welcome back guys, my name is Solden if you haven't been here before and this is part of our series of uh, how to make some gold in World of Warcraft. Today we're going to be talking about herbalism. So if you know on stream or on the videos here, uh, I mainly make all my gold from gathering and running the add-on called Alter Arms. Alter Arms has a separate video that explains a little bit about it, but a quick overview is it gets you into the dungeons that give you satchels for the ruins. What we're going to be talking about today, though, is herbalism as a profession, as a, as a way to pick up things that are going to give you some money. Okay, so uh, what I am doing at the moment is I'm just buying over to where I'm going to show you the first route, which is going to be in Azure Span. Uh, Azure Span is going to give us lots of Wraith Bark and stuff, but let's not do that straight away. Let's head right into the basics of it. Okay, so just like with mining, Herbalism has got a skill tree with specializations that are, is going to unlock as you get your skill points. Now, just like we did with mining, we'll start on the very front page. You're going to need to want to get yourself some tools. Uh, for herbalism, I got myself some perception tools, but I kept finesse as the main stat. That is where it's different from mining. It, on mining, you would have a different stat priority list. On herbalism, the stat priority list is as follows, at least the way that I've built out. So you're going to have number one stat being finesse, because obviously you want to pick up a lot of the herbs as we're going. And some of them, most of them actually uh, will be a single pickup for a good while of your herbalism journey. So finesse is really going to help you there. Next is going to be perception, because perception gives us the rare items, which is going to be the rousing essences. And these rousing essences obviously they get turned into the awakened versions and that's where we make a good chunk of our gold so you want to have a look at getting yourself a draconium sickle a welder cloth gardening hat and a floral basket and you want to run the stat priorities in this order we're going to go finesse then we're going to go perception then we will have deafness if you can't get something that is double statted for finesse and perception again the reason why i like to put deafness last as I explained in the other videos the deafness was good in the beginning of the x-pack where everything was super expensive and you wanted to pick up things quickly when the markets were high but the markets have now crashed and i don't see them getting any better in the foreseeable future so picking up a lot right now is for me personally better than picking up a little bit really quickly because you got to think about your vigor recharge as well let's gonna let's go now quickly on to looking at how your specializations are going to break down uh, as you level up your herbalism so obviously once you get to i think it's 24 or 25 it might actually be 26 i'm not even 100 percent sure you're going to unlock your specializations and their trees the way you want to unlock them or at least the way that I unlocked them uh, for my gathering is I started opening up botany. After botany, I opened up mastering the elements and after mastering the elements, bountiful harvest. Uh, let me explain quickly the breakdown for you so that you'll know where your knowledge points will go because again, you only get certain amounts of knowledge points per week that you can farm up while you're gathering or you can do your uh, once a week quest well not all and you should be doing everything you can for these knowledge points and you get your once a week quest from the main city hub in dragonflight and I'll, I'll explain that at the end of the video again as i'll show you who it is to get that quest from over on to these specializations though first thing you want to do is 
you want to pull out botany okay botany is going to give you a whole bunch of pips knowledge point or a stat point pickups i like to call them pips because they look like pips from dead by daylight and at the end of botany it's going to allow you to gather while you're mounted so as much as we're not worried about picking things up quickly with deafness we are worried about being able to stay mounted while we gather things so we can fly off straight away that is going to save us a lot more time than you would think the next thing you want to unlock when you can unlock another specialization is mastering the elements because the elemental overload ability that you get from unlocking this is going to let us get a lot more of the browsing essences which we turn into awakened ones obviously just like in mining and i guess for the rest of the expansion the most important rousing essence that you're going to find is going to be the rousing order so titan touched is going to be the first spec you want to open up and uh, as you can see compared to my mining journal if you watch that video i don't have as many points in my herbalism as i do in my mining uh simply because I guess I cared a little bit more about filling out the botany first um, and mastering the elements maxing that out and before going more into elements here I started building out a bountiful harvest and arbiculture I'll explain all of that in a minute but you want to fill out your botany get that mounting movement get your mastering of the elements in the beginning i would go halfway get to your plus five skill the halfway mark after you've gotten to the halfway mark here you want to come back to botany trees and you want to go for cultivation now i know a lot of people will put this at a lower importance than i would but for myself having these seeds in my bag all the time means that when I see rich soil it's another pickup for me and it's a worthwhile pickup because you get the arousing essences from it so that is why I went I think in the beginning I went all the way to agitated seeds so the agitated seeds um, are a once a week stop that you can make you'll fight a little flowery dude and he will drop a whole bunch of herbs for you in one shot uh, I've only got that to work once a week so I think it's a once a week like once a reset thing you can do but either way having the decayed seeds and even the rousing seeds in your inventory means that every rich soil is a worthwhile stop after you've gotten to agitated seeds i would go to uh conver conversance conversance i would go to conversance and we are going to pick up here if I remember correctly, I started out with this. I got it all the way to the plus 10 of lush herbs. And then I switched over to filling out parts of the bountiful harvest skills. Now, the reason why I did that is because uh, you don't get, or at least for the way that I am built, I guess it could have something to do with my perception and herbalism. You don't get much of the rousing essences. But if you build yourself out right, you can get a lot of the raw materials and the raw materials for herbalism are not that badly priced. Even now, after the markets have crashed, it's still worthwhile stopping to pick up uh, Rythbark, especially like this is the main dude that we stop for. And that's why I'm going to show you the next route or I'm going to show you the first route first, because this is better for for Rythbark and then Bubble Puppy. Both of these sell for good prices. They sell, I mean, it's not amazing. It's not beginning of the expansion prices, but they are worthwhile stopping for. So I did start chucking points into them. Uh, Bountiful Harvest, I went all the way up to learning all the specs first. So I filled this out to this pip over here. And then I went on to filling out Rythbark. And the nice thing is you do get uh, all round herbs in here like there's perception for gathering all herbs there is finesse for gathering all herbs and there's a deafness for gathering all herbs and i believe it's the same in each of these over here where the pips will affect all of your herbalism 
stops, I suppose. So let's break that down quickly, real quick, because herbalism is not as, I would say, complicated to go through as the mining would be. So we start with botany, we open this up so that we can mount, gather, fly away instead of mount, unmount, gather, mount, fly away. Make it nice and quick, not super important, but it is going to save you a lot of time. After we've got the botany maxed out, make sure that we got some mastery of the elements. We're going to go halfway there, come back to botany, go halfway in cultivation or all the way to agitated seeds. Converse, conservants, all the way to plus 10 skill on lush herbs. Bountiful harvests, we want to go all the way to the second last pip so that each of these are unlocked. Come back to botany, finish up, marshing the elements, finish up. And then after that, we can move back to Bountiful Harvest. And this is where I've started putting in my skill points to the separate herbs. It sounds complicated. It really isn't. Once you have the first couple of points in there, you know exactly what you're doing or where you are going with your skill tree. Let's have a look quickly at the roots. Oh, I've come to the wrong flight path. While I'm flying over to the Camp Antonidas, is that how I say it? Have a look at the way that I have laid out my UI. This is really important because it lets me fly around, have control, and be able to mouse over what I'm looking for in the area. We don't stop for absolutely everything. What we do stop for and this is where it might differ from other videos that you've watched. Is priority list of what we stop to actually spend our vigor on together. Myself, I like to stop for bubble poppy, saxifrage, writhe bark, and anything lush. That's out of normal ones. Obviously, if you see windswept, if you see frozen. Those are plants you will always stop for, no matter which kind of plant it is. So let's break that down into a quick priority list. We're going to get anything with essence. Then we're going to get uh, lush, which is herbalism version of rich, lush herbs. Then we will also be stopping for writhe bark as the number one out of all three saxifrage and bubble poppy so that's a priority list for picking up uh things while you are herbing so that you know you're not wasting time picking up the least cost worthy things because obviously you don't want to be uh as much as i take my farms really chilled and i take my time i don't want to be stopping for everything because that's going to mean that I'm spending all of that time on not picking up things that are worth my time. They're not going to be making me gold. And it's not going to feel good at the end of the day when you've spent the whole day just like for nothing. Right? Right? Remember, Rising Essence makes awakened things, makes gold. Simple. Rythebark makes gold. Saxifrage is okay. Bubble Puppy is okay. They're worth stopping for. They really are. Okay, so now what we're going to do after we have spoken about the bare basics of what you want to be looking for when you're running around is where are you going to run around. So this is the Azure Span and Azure Span is going to be really, really good for Wraith Bark pickups. I'm going to show you the route here quickly. It's going to draw around. Uh, don't necessarily follow my flying. Uh, but... It's going to draw around pretty much the exact same route that you would take while you are searching for primal nodes. So if you're a miner at the same time and you're looking for primal nodes, this is a really, really good route to take because it runs around the mountains quite a lot. And inside the mountains, you will find both draconium and your primal ores, which means even more stuff to stop for. The only place that I do like to stay away from is Bracken Hide Hollow. So sometimes I will cut short before this river unless I see the nodes. 
obviously like any gatherer i guess to break the monotony of the exact same route i like to stop and follow the nodes around if they take me to good places they take me to good places there was one time i had a uh titan touched saxifrage take me across three or four different titan touched herbs in one run so it can happen nothing extremely set obviously everything has its spawn points that are quite random in dragonflight which is nice but there is a way you can fly around and keep yourself entertained not the easiest place to fly for myself as your span is definitely not the easiest place to fly but it's a, it's it's where you want to be if you're looking to up your stores on Wraithbark. If you have inscription on another character, this is definitely where you want to be coming uh, quite often, at least once a week. The other place we can look at uh, when it comes to some, some farming route for this herbs. There's no specific herb you will find here. I will say though, you will find a lot less Wraith Bark. I think there's four points on this route that I actually look if the Wraith Bark spawned or not. So it's not really great for that, but you will find a lot of elemental and lush nodes, as well as a lot of saxifrage along this route. Bubble Poppy is good too, not as good as the Azure Span, but you'll find a fair amount of what you're looking for if you follow this route that's like being drawn around on screen it's the exact same one that we use for mining at the same time uh if you've seen the mining video you'll know what this what this route has and that, that it's really good for managing vigor i almost never have a downtime on my vigor when i'm running this route and the waking shores it's really easy to fly there the last place we're going to look at is going to be the Forbidden Reach. Now, Forbidden Reach is a bit of an iffy one for me. I don't like to gather there. I do it maybe once or twice a week just so I can get my keys for the vault at the same time. Uh, there isn't much to pick up herb-wise. Mining, it's really good. There's a lot of nodes that, that are um, empowered, I suppose we can call them. But I have noticed for herbalism, there's not a lot of rich or lush herbs in the area. Uh, not a lot of windswept either. Yes, windswept is one of the cheaper essences, but again, anything that is empowered or lush is worth stopping to pick up. So yeah, uh, I guess that's that's all we have to say about herbalism today. Remember, I have got other videos. I've got one on an add-on that I use to make some gold. I also have one that is focused around mining and there's going to be some more coming up so if you have any questions or comments or uh, advice maybe on how you make gold leave them in the comments below remember to like and subscribe and if you are keen every sunday i run mythic plus runs with viewers and friends over on twitch and i'd love to see you there i'd love to have have a chat we can we can chat about things. You can tell me how you're making gold and maybe we can farm together. That could be a good idea. Could, that could be a good idea. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Thanks. I can scrap. Bye. <laughs>